What is going on guys? Welcome to part 2 of using the canvas in HTML5 and in this tutorial we're going to be drawing some simple shapes but first please if you're watching this tutorial and you haven't watched the last one then make sure you have a JavaScript file and make sure you set up your canvas just like mine right here. So now once you do that you're ready to go ahead and start writing your JavaScript code. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making one and only one function that's going to be responsible for drawing all the shapes and stuff so I'm gonna call that function do first because you know it's my first and only function and that's what I want to do so now what we want to do is we want to call this function as soon as our web page is done loading so we need to add a window and we actually need to add an event listener on our window so window add event listener and this takes a couple parameters. The first parameter is when do you want to call this function? As soon as my window is done loading, aka my web page is done loading. What do you want to do? Well, I want to call this do first function. So I'm going to throw that right in there. And for the last parameter, just always write false. So, unless I tell you guys otherwise, not important to explain that right now. So what I want to do first is I want to store this canvas in a variable basically I want to be able to reference this canvas in JavaScript so the very first thing I need to do is make a variable I'm gonna call mine X now in order to reference HTML elements you need to reference them through their ID so that way if we add you know 10 different canvases on our web page each one of them would hopefully have a unique ID and we could reference them all in separate variables in JavaScript so just write document get element by ID and as the parameter for this you write the ID name which was canvas and now the variable X basically represents this canvas right here so I know what you're saying you're probably saying okay so to make shapes on this you write X um, you know like a draw circle or something like that well you're kinda right but you're like one step ahead of me there's one thing that we need to do first and let me explain this now that they're making HTML5, they're making a bunch of awesome features that like they're still in development right now. And one of the awesome things they're going to let us do is they're going to let us not only draw 2D shapes like circles and squares and triangles, but they're going to make the ability to draw 3D shapes like spheres and pyramids and cylinders. So they have different canvases set up for this so whenever we make our canvas we need to say what type it is so now that 3d is still in development it isn't a standard yet we only have that 2d capability so why did I tell you guys all that well whenever we set a reference to our canvas so we need to specify this is the 2d canvas so we write the reference to our canvas which is X and we write get context now as a parameter in here just go ahead and write 2d and this basically means okay we want to have a canvas and we want to be able to draw 2d shapes on it so now we are ready to reference this canvas through the variable canvas and it's set up to draw 2d shapes on but I know what you're saying uh oh Bucky you're gonna get an error because you forgot to use the VAR keyword in your JavaScript now did I forget and am I gonna get an error no I did that for a reason there are two different ways that you can make variables in JavaScript. You can use this keyword VAR or you can make a variable without it. Now it isn't like the same thing. You can just take your pick. Whatever you want to do. If you're feeling lazy, just don't use it. They actually made this for a reason. Whenever you use the VAR keyword, if you remember from my Java beginner JavaScript tutorials, this makes it a local variable. And whenever you make a variable without the VAR keyword, this makes it a global variable. This means that you can use this canvas variable anywhere inside this JavaScript file, even outside the, your function right here if you want to. So the reason I didn't use that VAR is because I might use this canvas in the upcoming tutorials. So anyways, I recommend making this global. I actually recommend making all your canvases global. It's going to make it a whole lot easier. So now with that being said, all the background information, let's go ahead and start drawing some crap on here. So in order to draw crap on your canvas, you just go ahead and reference your canvas right like that. And there are different functions for drawing different shapes. I'm going to show you how to draw a really simple rectangle. Stroke rect. Now what this does is it draws the outline of a rectangle and it takes four parameters. The first two parameters are pretty much the X and Y coordinates of 
where on the screen do you want to start drawing your rectangle? And I'm just going to go ahead and write 10, 10. And what this means is, remember like I said, your canvas is basically like a coordinate system with the top left being 0, 0. So whenever we write 10, 10 right there, it means, okay, start drawing my rectangle 10 over and 10 down. And that's the starting point, aka the top left of our rectangle is going to be 10 pixels over and 10 pixels down. So now it says, okay, I know where to start, but how big do you want that rectangle? Well, let's go ahead and just make it like 100 by 200. So 100 by 200 pixels. If we go ahead and save this and refresh it, check it out. And okay, I messed something up. Let me see what I meant. Oh, I see, I didn't capitalize event right like there. So hopefully when I save this now and refresh, there we go, we get a nice weird looking triangle. So as you can see, stroke rect basically took that canvas and it drew a outline of a rectangle on it. Now the positioning as you can see is 10 over and 10 down and that's where this top left of the rectangle is. So that's where we gave it the position of where to start drawing it. So if we go ahead and actually, well I'll keep that for now. Let me go ahead and finish explaining this. So now the third parameter is how wide do you want the rectangle to be? Well this rectangle is a hundred pixels wide because that was the parameter we gave it right there and the height of it is 200 pixels. So we want to draw a rectangle that's 100 by 200 and we want to start drawing it at 10 over and 10 down. Pretty sweet, huh? So that is how you draw simple blank rectangles. But what if you wanted to draw a solid rectangle, a rectangle that had color inside it? Well, instead of stroke rect, you would or excuse me, you would use a function called fill rect. And this draws a rectangle that's filled with color instead of just the outline of a rectangle. In other words, it draws a solid rectangle just like this. Pretty awesome, huh? So now that I have time, I didn't think I was going to have time for this, but I wanted to talk to you guys about one more function that's actually pretty cool. And that is something called clear rect. So let me go ahead and draw a clear rectangle. And you're saying, okay, a clear rectangle? What's the point of that? Is it just like a rectangle that's invisible? Well, a clear rect, let me just go ahead and draw it. Clear rect is like a rectangle eraser. Whenever we draw a clear rect, say we wanted to draw a clear rect right in here, what it would do is it would sit on top of here and it would subtract pixels from whatever was underneath it. It's kind of like an eraser. So let me go ahead and figure this out. Okay, I want to start at 2020 which basically says, okay, we want to start right around here, and how big do we want this clear rect to be? Let's just make it like 50 by 90. So let me go ahead and save this and refresh and check it out. What we did is we basically erased part of our black rectangle by making a clear rect on top of it. We started at 20 over, 20 down, which is right here, it's 50 wide and 90 high. Now anything that's underneath it, it's going to subtract those pixels. In other words, it's going to take a chunk out of this black rectangle. So that is three simple functions. Stroke rect, which basically makes the outline of a rectangle. Fill rect, which basically makes a solid rectangle, this black rectangle right here. And clear rect, which is basically like an eraser, which whatever is underneath it, it takes a chunk out of it. Technically, it's called subtracting pixels from the area, but I just call it a rectangle eraser. So those are three simple things that we can do with the canvas in HTML5, but trust me guys, we haven't even cracked the shell yet. There is so much stuff to cover with the canvas, it's super powerful, and it's a super amazing feature. So for now, thank you guys for watching, and uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover, so I'll see you guys in the upcoming tutorials.